welcome back to another video this is the first sit down video i'm filming in 2024 i've been trying to finish up my 2023 reading vlog videos but this is the first sit down i'm like trying to wear all my clothes that i don't normally wear out because i never wear them out but at home i can wear it today we are going to be starting the yearly wrap up videos of which the first one will be my best books of 2023 you will find out when that video eventually comes up but i actually first filmed the every single book i read in 2023 video but in terms of order this will be the first video that will go out so yeah i have been watching many many of my favorite booktubers coming up with their list of best books of 2023 and now it's finally my turn i feel like if you have watched my videos you would have a very good idea of what books will be on this list but i assume that people who watch this video may not have watched my previous videos before so hopefully the content will still be quite interesting for you i have to give my disclaimers first because as always for my wrap ups they are going to be very long so i will not include trigger warnings but if you are interested in the books please do look up trigger warnings before going into them i will not be ranking them within each category so as always i go through them by categories from like my least favorites of my favorites to the favorites based on the rankings so like four stars all the way to five stars but within each ranking for example within the five stars there are no favorites in there oh i think this book is better than this other book yeah, because they're all my favourites, don't make me choose. And one reflection point I had for this year is that I think I only had 21 or 22 compared to last year. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's for 2023, right? I only have 22 books, which is like, huh? But what I can say is that for my 22 favourites here, I didn't want to find one more just to fit into the 23 books for 2023, you know. What is on this list are very much my favourites of 2023. And so yeah, without further ado, let's start the video. Starting with our all star on this list. And that is A Cosmic Kind of Love by Samantha Young. Thank you so much to Time Sweets for sending this over for me to read and review. I mentioned in my review that I was very surprised by how much I enjoyed this because from the Goodreads ratings, right, it's 3.68. And I guess from this, I learned not to judge a book too much based on the Goodreads rating because I read this and I was like, oh, this is so enjoyable. Basically, what this story is about, right, it's about event planner, Helly Goodman, and Christopher Ortiz, who is an astronaut. Oh my god, what interest interesting professions like oh my goodness and how the story started right is that so because she's an event planner she accidentally receives a collection of videos from the brights of which those videos were a collection of videos from the bright's ex-boyfriend to that bright so she knew it was like kind of bad to watch but she watched the videos and then it was actually christopher in the video and then after that she decided to start sending emails and video diaries to his deactivated nasa address thinking that it's deactivated i can just send it into the void right but actually it wasn't deactivated so he has been receiving everything that she has been sending and then somehow they also meet in real life so then their relationship develops from there and i found it so cute like the concept was very interesting but do be warned that the trigger warnings in this can be quite heavy so do look up trigger warnings and if you're able to handle it please read it because i found this really cute and i only gave this like a few taps but tap nevertheless and so yeah this was the first book okay then the next book is the true love experiment by christina lauren and this one i will always remember as like a really clever book because it is the sequel to the soulmate equation and the story of that one is that in that world there is a company working and researching on dna and apparently it's like they are able to match you up with whoever is in the system and you are genetically matched so they have differing levels as well and if i remember correctly it's either platinum or diamond match is like the rarest one that was the plot of the first book right but for the second book it's in the same world so that technology and research still exists but now they added an element of a dating show they recruited the main character felicity chen recruited by the male main character connor prince who was kind of like forced to work on this it was his idea to recruit felicity and also include the element of the technology so she'll be meeting this group of guys through the dating show and then the audience will get to pick who she ends up with then at the end it'll be reviewed like what kind of matches their pairing is but then at the same time 
Felicity and Connor are also falling in love with each other. So it's like very very interesting in that it's not just a simple love story. There's an added element of the genetic testing. There's also the added element of the dating show which is so fun to read about. And I have actually read this for a video and at this point I forgot to mention at the start every book in this video where I've talked about. I will try my best to link it up above or in the description below because cards only allow up to 5 videos. So that's all I have to say for it. <laughs> I gave it 4 stars as well. And then now we will be moving on to the 4.25 stars for this video. The first one on this list on the 4.25s is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So for Taylor Jenkins Reid, I've read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, of which I gave 4 stars. I DNF's Malibu Rising and I wasn't interested in Carrie Soto is back. For One True Loves, I gave it 4.25. So technically, it's my favourite out of everything that I've read from her so far because I love the concept and the premise. It's something that sparks a lot of discussion. So the plot for this is that Emma Blair, she married her high school sweetheart, Jesse. But on their first wedding anniversary, Jesse was on a helicopter over the Pacific when it went missing. And of course, it devastated Emma, right? So she quit her job and moved home in an effort to put her life back together. And years later, she is now in her 30s when she runs into an old friend, Sam, and finds herself falling in love again. So when Emma and Sam are about to get engaged. Then somehow, at the same time, Jesse was found. He's alive and he has been trying all this time to make his way back to her. Emma is forced to make a decision like whether she wants to choose Sam or choose Jesse. And it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, what are the chances that something will actually happen like that in real life, right? But imagine if it were to actually happen, I really, oh, it's so hard to make a decision. But as I read the story, I eventually weighed everything and I felt that she would be better off with this person of which that was how the story ended then I felt like okay that's the most logical way that it could have ended in my opinion but the reading experience was very enjoyable in the I was like oh my god it's so difficult like how is she gonna choose all that kind of discussion so I feel like it would be quite a good book club discussion also so yeah those were my thoughts on that next book is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry okay slightly disappointed that this wasn't like a 5 star but I mean it's, it's still a favourite of mine and I did give it 4.25 stars but this one I mean is so popular on booktube that I'm sure you would have heard of this book already but it's basically a very cosy fantasy about about how an orc who used to be in a lot of battles, she decides to put down her ex and start a coffee shop. Through the process, there's a lot of found family in that she meets a lot of different characters of people who come to work at her shop, people who come to visit her shop as a regular. It's also of how she has to market her business to a city who has never heard of what coffee is and how slowly things get added to the menu you know it's all these kind of little things and it's just like oh, it's very very cute especially when at the start of the process of like trying to get people to regularly come and visit her business and frequent her coffee shop and it's so so cute yeah i mean no surprise that this is on my list then we have lock every door by riley sager and i actually really enjoyed this i always get this book mixed up with the roof wear one the turn of the key but i actually enjoy lock every door more. It's about how our main character receives an ad of how you just have to be an apartment sitter and you'll be paid like a lot of money but you have like a few rules to follow. For example, like you cannot spend the night away from the apartment, you cannot have friends over, you cannot tell your family or friends where you're going, things like that and you cannot interact with the other residents but because the money is too good to refuse, our character accepts and then things start to happen in the building and then she's like what is happening? She's determined to get behind the bottom of it and her life might also be in danger so this really gave me like creepy vibes and it was so intriguing that i didn't want to put the book down and it's saying something because i read this book physically and the book was a hardcover for me right if i see that the book is very thick i will feel a bit like deterred from wanting to pick it up because you can physically see how much of the book you have left but for me this didn't happen and i was very excited to keep reading it so it was like a very enjoyable reading experience again so i really recommend it if you haven't yet to pick this up i assume most of you would have because this is like a very popular thriller that didn't it didn't come out recently it came out a few years ago really so yeah very happy to have read this and enjoyed it then we have mysteries of thorn manor by margaret rogerson which is a sequel novella to sorcery of thorns one of my favorites of 2022 i need more i feel like now that i'm talking about this right i really want to reread this novella again because it's a very short read i really love the characters of this world and the magic also. The novella was good but actually I would really love if there were a sequel. I would totally eat it up. I really just need to go back to this world. I don't really want to spoil too much of 
this particular novella of the plot. But basically, the first book, Sorcery of Thorns, is about Elizabeth, who grew up in one of Ostomir's great libraries. In the library, they have like magical grimoires. Some of them are so dangerous that they have to be locked up. So she has always wanted to become a warden to protect the kingdom from the grimoire's power, things like that. But then an act of sabotage happens and it releases the library's most dangerous grimoire. And somehow Elizabeth is like the prime suspect, even though she didn't do it. She is trying to prove her innocence with the help of Nathaniel, a sorcerer, and his mysterious demonic servant and then their relationship blossoms from there and the plot deepens so so good so i really liked it okay then i have to talk about these two books together we have chain of gold and chain of iron of which i did a full reading vlog for spoilery and like look at all my tabs everybody so both of these books i really really loved not to the extent of i would say the infernal devices or the dark artifices series but they were still really enjoyable i mean 4.25 stars what i really liked was that we were introduced to fresh new characters right because it's been a while and then you have all the different plots of each character uh, i feel like i know cassandra claire's books are long but i feel like this series was particularly long but same thing i really loved the characters that were introduced the plot towards the end got a bit like uh this is not to my taste but the first two books especially with the romance pairings <sighs> so cute and it's not just like one particular pair there are so many characters in this that each pair you will come to root for also i feel like if i had to choose right i would choose chain of iron as my favorite but it's only by a bit more than chain of gold only mostly because of this certain fake dating fake wedding trope in here that i'm just like oh so cute and it's like the angst and the pining basically chain of gold is about cordelia carstairs who is a shadow hunter she travels to london and that is when she's reunited with her childhood friend James and Lucy Herondale and is drawn into their world. She has always had a crush on James but he has been sworn to marry someone else so that is where the pining comes in in yeah i just really enjoyed this and i can't wait for the is it the wicked power series the one featuring kit and ty as the main characters oh my god i really can't wait anxiously waiting then the last book in the 4.25 category is sweet cute by emma lord i actually bought this book like quite some time back and when i eventually started reading i was quite worried because this is a ya book and there are times when I've outgrown the YA genre such that when I read it, I've recognized that this is very YA and it's not something that is not of which I am the target audience of. But this book, I didn't feel that way at all and I really loved the, the plot so much because it's so complicated but it isn't like overly complicated and it's so good. And there's also mixed media element in this of which I'm also surprised that I enjoyed because I don't like texting in books. I can't remember if I read this with an audiobook but if I did, then it's even like more surprising because I especially hate it when there is texting in books and then the narrators have to back and forth the texting and read it out but I wasn't bothered reading this and it also includes like tweets because tweet cute right it's kind of like enemies to lovers because they are the children of rival fast food chains if I'm not wrong yeah and then it's like at the same time they are also online friends so there is that whole like double plot of what is going to happen when eventually everything spills out onto the table right and they're also their chemistry is so good so yeah tweet cute now onto the 4.5 stars We have the only novella on this list which is The Boss Who Stole Christmas and this was actually like a very random I just need something fun and short that is Christmassy but this book actually gave me more Christmas vibes than all the Christmas books I read for that video. I felt like the story wasn't incomplete just because it was a novella and it was very good for what it was trying to do so I really enjoyed it and I really had a great time and I got very massive views for wanting to go to a Christmas market so yeah. Then we have The Whisper Man by Alex North. I love it when I read thrillers and I really enjoy it because it's like, yes, this is why I read thrillers, you know? So this one is about Tom Kennedy and his son Jake who moved to a new town called Featherbank after his wife died but they don't know that the town has a dark past. So 20 years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five residents and until Frank Carter was caught, he was nicknamed The Whisper Man because he would lure his victims out by whispering at their windows at night. So just as Tom and Jake 
start to settle into their new home, they find that a young boy has vanished. That ignites old rumours of how, at the time, Frank Carter had an accomplice. And then around the same time, Jake starts to hear whispering at his windows at night. So things happen from there and it's just so fast-paced. I love it so much. Very, very fun thriller. Okay, then we have Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto who wrote Dowie for Aunties and Four Aunties and a Wedding. Dowie for Aunties was on my favourites list of 2022. Four Aunties and a Wedding was on my worst list of 2022. And I'm very happy to say that Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers is on my favourite list of 2023 because I felt the magic that I had when I was reading Dowie for Aunties. So you have this very, very cute main character, Vera Wong, who is like a... <sighs> a very funny auntie. So it's like Dowie for aunties, right? But you focus on the perspective of the auntie, except that it's Vera and Vera is 60. So she owns a tea shop in Chinatown and one morning she wakes up and finds a dead body in her tea shop and then she's like, what? What happened? I need to get down to the bottom of this. I have my prime suspects that I cannot trust the police. I'll do it by myself. And then it's just you on this journey trying to figure out who killed that person. And it's like very funny because she's the very funny auntie, you know? So very cute also. And I think... I read this with the audiobook, so I recommend the audiobook as well. Next is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. In this one, we follow theoretical physicist Elsie Hannaway and Jack Smith. Their first encounter, right? Elsie was actually doing her side hustle because theoretical physicists' salaries aren't a lot. So her side hustle is being like a fake girlfriend for clients. Her favourite client has an older brother that she can't really like stand because somehow he makes her nervous. But then we find out that Jack Smith, who is her favourite client's brother, is also the cold-hearted experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career and undermined the reputation of theorists everywhere. He also rules over the physics department at MIT, who may stand right between Elsie and her dream job. So this book, there is a lot of science in this, much more than the love hypothesis and love on the brain, because there is also beef between theoretical and experimental physicists. So there is that whole plot because Jack, as an experimental physicist, he did something right to the mentor such that it also implicated the theoretical physicist field. But then also, they can't resist their attraction to each other. So there's that plot line. Again, the same problem of he's very big and very small has persisted in this, but I still really enjoyed it. I gave it 4.5 stars. Okay, then next book we have is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which is again a very warm, uplifting novel about an isolated witch whose opportunity to embrace a quirky new family and a new love changes the course of her life. So Mika is the isolated witch that we are talking about and she has always grown up isolated from everyone because apparently it's not good to have witches congregating together because then it'd be like too much power in one region or something like that. She actually takes to uploading videos online where she posts about pretending to be a witch because she thinks no one will take it seriously, right? Because there are so many fake things online nowadays. But someone does and she receives an offer to travel to Nowhere House to teach three young witches how to control their magic. And it breaks all of her rules because you can't have that many witches under one roof but then they're children. So she eventually agrees and then that's where she gets to know Jamie who is Nowhere House's librarian and who would do anything to protect the children. She also gets to know the caretakers there and a retired actor as well. So it's like found family again and really reminds me of The House in the Cerulean Sea. So if you liked that, do consider picking this up as well. And the romance is it's also very cute. So yeah, you can see the trend of books that I like, right? <laughs> Then we have Welcome to the Hyunam Dong Bookshop, of which the translator, Shana Tan, is a Singaporean. Like, yes, Singapore represent, you know? The author is Hwang Borum. This one is recommended for readers of Matt Hicks, The Midnight Library, and Gabrielle Zevin's The Story Life of AJ Fikri. Really loved Midnight Library. And in this book, we follow Yongju, who is burnt out. She had a high-flying career, a demanding marriage, and busy life in Seoul. By society's definitions, she is very successful, but she feels very drained. And she has always had a dream that she has yet to pursue. So she took a leap of faith, and she left her old life behind, including quitting her job, moving to a different place, and divorcing her husband. And she opens a bookshop known as the Hyunam Dong Bookshop in a small residential neighbourhood outside the city. Of course, she's still reeling from what happened, right? So she spends like quite a bit of time in the beginning moping and sobbing and trying to heal. And then slowly, she comes to take her bookshop really seriously and thinks of ways of how to maintain her business such that it won't close down. And it also involves a lot of things like maybe I should host book events, maybe I should hire someone to handle the coffee orders and it's like a good pairing, right? Coffee and books. And it's a very important 
book to read in my opinion because it really teaches you how you shouldn't need to conform to societal expectations and what society defines as success may not be the definition for you. It's very important to also not compare yourself to others and just go about life at your own pace and know that life is a journey. I really liked a lot of quotes from this book. I did read this book in a particular video that has not yet gone out so I'm not gonna share too much about that but please look out for that video. Okay then the only 4.75 star in this list Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. I can't believe I read that last year actually. It feels like I read it a very long time ago but again it really gives me the vibes of Tweet Cute by Emma Lord because it's also a YA so I wasn't expecting myself to love it but I did I love it so much it's about friends to lovers which also is not a trope that I thought I would like but I really loved it in this and it's like a lot of slow burn and pining and angst and it's so so cute Wes is the sweetest character and just really read this if you want a very fast good time that's what I'm gonna say okay we are now in the 5 star territory Starting with Begin Again by Emma Lord. I have two Emma Lord books on this list, guys. Oh my goodness. So this one is about Andy, who is trying to transfer from community college to the hyper-competitive Blue Ridge State, major in psychology and maintain her lifelong goal of becoming an iconic self-help figure, despite the nerves that have recently thrown her for a loop. But the moment she arrives, everything like goes wrong because she already had a rocky relationship with her boyfriend, Connor. And then it gets more complicated when she discovers that after she transferred, he transferred to the community college. But then at Blue Ridge, she also has a motive for wanting to go there apart from being with her boyfriend that is relating to her mother. She also makes friends along the way like her roommate Shay and their RA Milo. I think I've said it in many videos but she is living the life that I wanted, what I envisioned my university life to be like <laughs> but it didn't happen that way but it's okay. I got to live vicariously through her. The chemistry between her and Milo is just so cute. There is also an element of a podcast in this so it's not just like normal university life. It's slightly more complicated than that and I loved it so much. I had such a good time reading it. Again, YA. So like, there is a genre of YA that I still like, guys. Then we have When in Rome and this is like a really unexpected find because I wanted to read Practice Makes Perfect but then I realised that that was the second book. So I was like, okay, let me just read the first book so that I can read chronologically and it was like five stars. So good. In this one, we follow Amelia Rose who is a celebrity but she is in a state of burnout so she was inspired by her favourite Audrey Hepburn film Roman Holiday so she decided to drive to Rome, Kentucky as like a kind of similar place and then that's when her car breaks down right on Noah Walker's front lawn so for him he's too busy running the pie shop his grandmother left him for celebrity problems so he's quite dismissive towards her but he's kind enough to let her stay at his place for the night and then the story progresses from there and it's a lot about small town vibes and how celebrity pairing with a person from a small town and it's like so magical and so cute and the pie shop thing like oh my goodness very very cute and cozy vibes again okay then we have yours truly by abby jimenez so we follow brianna ortiz who is a doctor but her life at this point is not going well because her divorce has just been finalized her brother's running out of time to find a kidney donor and the promotion that she thought she was going to get is going to go to dr jacob maddox so obviously she doesn't like him but then he sends her a letter and it's a really good letter one that proves to her that he's not actually as bad as she thought he was and then they start to exchange change letters and their relationship blossoms from there. It's not just a normal fluffy story because it also deals with the character's trauma. So again, do look up trigger warnings. But it's so cute and so complete. Realistic depiction of love, I feel. And the epilogue, I was like a blubbering mess when I read that chapter, okay? Cue video. <laughs> oh my god, this freaking last chapter. Oh my goodness. <sighs> oh my god, you're gonna be there for each other. And he said, Oh my god, what did he say? She said, I'm gonna move in if that's okay. And then he said, Yeah, I like that. But why don't we get a new place? That way you'll feel like it's yours too. We'll put both our names on it. Or just yours if it makes you feel better. <laughs> But yes, yours truly. Oh my god, we are down to the last three books. Next book is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Gamas. I still feel like this book is so pretty and so good. Oh my gosh, I have yet to watch the adaptation, so I'm very excited for that. 
I didn't expect myself to love this as much as I did because I don't like historical fiction anymore. But this is like very interesting in that it deals with Elizabeth Zott, who is a very strong character. So she's a chemist and she is very ready to stand up for herself. So unfortunately, she was forced to resign from her role at Hastings Research Institute. So from there, an opportunity came to her in that she went on to become a cooking show host, Supper at Six. And she uses chemistry concepts in her cooking which was also very creative because at that time nobody would be like using Bunsen burner to make coffee so it's like very attention grabbing and she garners an audience and from there there is also like her relationship with her daughter and her relationship with her dog <sighs> so adorable and there's a bit of a romance in this as well i love this so much and i love the dog especially much it's lessons in chemistry okay second last book is exes and o's by emilia look at my tabs i love it so this one we follow tara chen who is an online influencer who also loves romance novels and trevor mccall who is a firefighter so because of some circumstances they become roommates essentially tara has had her heart broken too many times such that she somehow gets the idea that maybe if i go on a second chance romance with my Ted exes, somehow I will find my true love. And then of course Trevor was like, uh, I mean, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm gonna help you do it anyway. And then through the journey, their relationship also develops. This epilogue, oh my god. Chef's Kiss. I loved it so much. One of the best epilogues I've ever read. Steamy, steamy novel. I loved it. Thanks to Time Streets for sending me this because it's a favorite. <sighs> okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know what energy I'm in now, but I'm just very excited. And the last book for this video, last favorite. I don't know whether it's my most favorite. Don't ask me to choose. But that book is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I don't know. I think I just really like the good girl. Actually, turns out not to be a very good girl. And then the bad guy actually doesn't seem to be like a very bad guy. <laughs> and then they're like. Together, oh, like the first book we follow Noah, right? So in the second book we follow Noah's youngest sister, Annie Walker. Will is Amelia's bodyguard. Annie has been on a quest to find her perfect match, but then things don't really go well. She overheard her date calling her unbelievably boring. So she enlists the help of Will to become her tutor to teach her like how to be more charming so that guys will eventually come to like her, things like that. And of course, Will is the perfect guy that he is, right? He's like, I don't want to change you but I cannot bring myself to say no to your request so he agrees to teach her even if he doesn't believe in love himself and then that's when their story blossoms and they develop a relationship and the whole town is like a bunch of gossipy people <laughs> very happy that I was on that journey now that I'm saying it, I want to reread the book again oh my goodness okay sorry I don't know why I'm in such a giddy mood <laughs> but yeah okay 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 with that I have come to the end of this video if you have read any of the books on this list and they were also your favourites, let me know because we can gush about it together. If not, let me know what was one of your favourite books of 2023 and I would be tempted to be introduced to your favourites as well. If you are still watching, I have been filming for an hour. Please give me a kiss emoji because I feel like a lot of the books here, quite a lot of romances. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to see more of such content. The next video should be the worst books already. I hope you're having a great day or a great week whenever or wherever you're watching. Remember to stay hydrated and I'll see you in my next video.